So you're thinking of going off grid, but you don't know where to start. That's because battery and solar setups can be pretty difficult to understand, but I'm gonna make sure you understand the basics so you know where to start. My name's David, welcome to the Snowstead. We lived almost five years off grid in our Sprinter van and also here on our property. We're now finishing the build on our tiny home, but that's a whole other story. Let's get right into the basics with our off grid battery and solar. Also, don't mind my chickens if they're loud in the background. They're always like that. So this is what you're gonna need to do a battery and solar setup. Batteries, obviously, an inverter, solar charge controller, bus bar or distributor, a battery monitor, wires and fuses, and of course, solar panels. We're gonna go in depth to each of these components and figure out how you can calculate the size of everything you need. So let's get right into it. The heart of your system is gonna be your batteries. These days, you might as well stick to lithium phosphate batteries rather, rather than lead acid, which is what you find in your car. In the back of our van is where we kept our batteries and we had five Battleborn 100 amp hour batteries. This gave us a ton of power and output so that we could do everything we needed off grid, like our Wi-Fi, using our computers, powering lights, blenders, whatever. So you wanna figure out how much battery you really need and sizing your batteries can be complicated, but I'm gonna give you an example to make it simple. Let's say when you have everything plugged in on your system, like a microwave, laptop, Wi-Fi, let's say all that adds up to 1200 watts of 120 volt AC power. What we're gonna do is we're gonna decide, let's say it's three and a half hours you're running all of that all at once. We're gonna take 1200 watts, you're gonna times that by three and a half hours and that's gonna give you 4200 watt hours. You're gonna now convert that to DC because batteries run in DC. You're gonna do 4,200 watt hours divided by 12 volts because they're most likely 12 volt batteries, which will equal 350 amp hours of DC power. Now we wanna figure out how much battery we need. If we're looking at a 100 amp hour battery, we're gonna do 350 amp hours divided by 100 amp hours, which is 3.5 batteries you'll need. So really, that means you need four 100 amp hour 12 volt DC batteries. Make sure you subscribe because I'm gonna be throwing four of these Battleborn GC3s in our tiny home. That's because even though it's on the grid, we go out of power a lot because of where we live. So we're gonna be using these as backup power. And so you'll be able to see the videos on how I hook that up and how it all works together. So make sure you subscribe for that. In the meantime, let's get back to the video. Obviously cost is gonna be a big factor, but in the battery world, you get what you pay for. I only go for Battleborn batteries because they are the best of the best, in my opinion, product, support, everything. With lithium batteries, they last a ton longer. So this can drain fully three to 5,000 times before its capacity is reduced to 75% of its original power capacity, which is so, so impressive. So just a reminder, you get what you pay for with batteries. Once you have your batteries picked out, you're gonna wanna choose an inverter. What an inverter does is it takes that DC power from your batteries and converts it to AC power for your household plugs, stuff like that. I totally recommend Victron. We have used other brands in the past, but Victron has been the best performance, the best quality for everything like that. And they range from 1000 to 5000 watt inverters. So to figure out the size of inverter you need, what you can do is you can take that base load we talked about before, the 1200, but let's make it 1500 watts just to be safe. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take your 1500 watts of everything running all at one time, and you're gonna add 20% for that little safety buffer. That brings you to 1800 watts of power you'll be using inverting at one time, which means you'll use a 2000 watt inverter. Remember, they range from 1,000 to 5,000, so there's always something for your system. A really good way to do it is for every 100 amp hours of battery power you have, you're gonna want about 1,000 watts of inverting power. Another really awesome thing about inverters is not only can they supply power, but they can also draw power in and recharge your batteries called shore power. Let's say in our van, we went and plugged up to a campsite, when we plug into the shore power or the, the campsite power, we would tell our inverter, hey, we're plugged in, can you charge up our batteries because we're running low on solar? It would then take power from the shore or the campsite and draw it back into our batteries and make sure we're fully charged. It's a really, really awesome system. It just absolutely poured outside. Luckily I saved it in time. 
By the way, if you have any questions along the way about this stuff, I know it, even though it's the basics, it's still complicated. Make sure you leave your comments below and I'll do my best to try to answer them. And I know other people will too. Up next is the solar charge controller. What this does is it takes the power coming in from your solar panels and makes it nice and clean to go into your battery so it doesn't overcharge or surge anything. MPPT is a technology used in solar charge controllers, which is maximum power point tracking, which basically allows it to change the voltage and current to maximize the power output into your batteries, which is great for off-grid. How to choose your solar charge controller isn't too difficult, but you can use something like this chart here. In our case, we're upping our batteries to 24 volt and we're using up to 2000 watts of solar panels. So for this, we needed the 150, 70, MPPT solar charge controller. You'll also need a distributor or bus bars. Basically what that does is it connects your positive and your negative wires together for parts of your system and components. So if you look in this Lynx distributor by Victron, it's basically two lines of metal. You can think of them as wires where the black is the negative, connects all the negatives together down there. And the, the red is the positive and connects all the positives together. Say so this is connect your inverter, your solar charge controller, those sorts of things. Now you don't need a distributor like this that's a little bit more expensive. You can go something more traditional like what we did in our van. You can see here we have our two bus bars, our negative and positive bus bars where they all connect. So all the negatives connect over there and all the positives connect over here. This is just a more traditional way of doing it compared to the Victron distributor. Battery monitors are also really important. They allow you to double check how much capacity and battery you have left. There's uh, some ways you can do it. Uh, one is this, this shunt, which basically monitors how much power is coming out of the battery. And you can see the capacity and the voltage on here. Or you can go with something a little bit more technical like the Servo GX from Victron, which allows you to control it. You can see more in depth and you can actually uh, add on more systems like you can monitor the different components all together in this one touch screen, which is really cool. And just to show you in our van real quick, here's the BMV 712. And here you can see that we can see we're 99.1% of battery. And we can also check on how many amp hours, watts are coming in or being used and as well as voltage. An extremely important part of your system is gonna be wires and fuses. This is gonna connect all your components together and make sure they're safe and secure. Fuses are a little bit more difficult to determine what you need between what components. I don't want to get too technical here, especially about wire either, but these things can be easily calculated using online calculators for battery systems or a lot of resources. Battleborn has a ton of resources. What I like to do if I'm trying to figure something out is I'll reference other people's schematics, like my schematic that I've created here. I basically built those off of other people's references, Battleborn resources, and those sorts of things. But these are incredibly important. So make sure you're oversizing and not undersizing to make sure you're safe. Solar panels are one of the most important parts of off-grid battery systems. So let's take a look at ours here on our off-grid outhouse. Solar panels come in two different types, monocrystalline and polycrystalline. Monocrystalline is better because the way it's made, it's more efficient, but it is a little bit more expensive. But honestly, mono and poly, they both work great. In terms of solar for sizing, what you're gonna wanna do is use a rule of thumb of about 200 watts per 100 amp hours of battery storage that you have. But honestly, from our experience living off grid, you want as much solar as you possibly can get because like here in the winter, we don't get very much sun. So we rely on backup power like a generator to help supplement, even though we keep the solar panels clean from snow and leaves. And you just wanna be able to size a lot more than you think. And there you are. Those are the basics of a battery and solar off-grid setup. You're pretty much set to start researching and doing what you need to do. Also, shout out to Battleborn. They are the best provider of batteries for your off-grid setup, whether it's an RV, van, tiny home, boat, whatever. Battleborn, I can't recommend them any higher than that. Also, I really love Victron's products as well. They're top of the line. They will make sure that you're safe, secure, and getting all the power you need. If you have any questions about anything that we've talked about, make sure you comment below. And if you wanna see any other videos about how uh, 
Like maybe you have a question about off-grid that you just haven't seen anywhere else. Make sure you comment and let me know you want to see a video about something like that. And I'm more than happy to create it. In the meantime, go enjoy picking and choosing everything you need to do to go off-grid and have a lot of fun with it because it's one of the best things you'll do. Anyways, I'll see you next video. Thanks for watching.